Hello, you've caught me thinking about the nature of good and evil. Most of the time it's pretty clear cut. Good, evil, good, evil. But increasingly the divide between heroes and villains has become more of an indistinct smudge than the pin sharp moral road markings we're all used to. Good guys on the left, bad guys on the right. Now we've got a gaggle of not quite sure guys hanging about in the middle being all grown up and morally grey. Which is good, it means video game storytelling is becoming more nuanced and driven by player choice. What it also means is that you'll often be in control of characters who, while you still feel a strong affinity for them, have done some very naughty things indeed. Here are seven times it turns out you were the bad guy all along. Naturally, this video will contain spoilers for... Uh, well, if I tell you what games are going to be spoiled, that's kind of a spoiler already, isn't it? So don't watch this video unless you finished all games ever. First up, we've got Spec Ops The Line on the surface, a straightforward cover shooter where you control a righteous squad of Western soldiers off to shoot bad people from somewhere else. This is good, you'll think, squatting among the ruins of Dubai as you fire justice from your gun with a character voiced by Nolan North, who everyone knows only plays goodies. Unless he's doing an accent, obviously. Until you get to that bit, with the white phosphorus and the dead civilians that you killed and the haunting close-up on this mother and child. There's a venomous parallel between the actions of Walker and you, the player. You're only doing what you're told to do, aren't you? Go to this checkpoint, press those buttons, kill these meaningless people. But very rarely are you forced to think about the innocents you've casually massacred, much less stare into their peeling eye sockets. It's harrowing, it's brilliant, and no matter how much you and Walker try to offload responsibility, there's no denying that you are the villain of this piece. Illusion shattered, narrative knife twisting in your guts. Ouch. Get me out of here. Ah, oh, but don't put me here. The ending sequence of The Last of Us inside the hospital. No, it's dark and hard and I don't agree with what Joel does, etc, etc. Although that didn't stop me killing all three surgeons when really just one would do. I'm immersed though, I'm role-playing what turns out to be an increasingly sadistic, self-centred nut job. For an entire game now I've been making excuses for him. Oh, he had to kill those men because otherwise they'd have killed him. Uh, he had to butcher that lot because he was protecting Ellie. He had to shoot Marlene in the face because otherwise she'd have acted in the interest of the greater good and possibly found a cure for the mushroom apocalypse. Yeah. Look, I know what happened to Joel in the past was awful. I know what drives him. It's raw emotion, not logic. But when that passion overrides sense and he murders innocent people and acts against Ellie's will, especially when you consider the events of Left Behind, it does make you think about Joel, doesn't it? He's a very good killer, and he pretty much kills anyone who gets in the way of what he wants. He's viewed by other characters as a madman, and all the while we're thinking, no, 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 not Joel, he's different. But this ending, this here, and then this lie. I swear. Naughty Joel. Naughty. Sometimes in games you know you're playing as a nasty piece of work, like in GTA V with Trevor. Sometimes you can choose to be a jerk, like in Infamous or Mass Effect. And sometimes the game plays you and you unwittingly bumble about, blissfully ignorant of your own character's secret demons, such as the case with Silent Hill 2, one of the greatest horror games of all time, not because it's utterly terrifying and has fog and oddly limbed nurses, even though all those things are true, but because it fiddles with your mind strings like a wicked puppet master. 
Initially, you arrive in the eerie town with a letter from your wife Mary, who died of sickness three years before. Everything is weird, you run about. You soil yourself thanks to the omnipresent psychological terror. So far, so very survival horror. Then the twist happens and we find out why Silent Hill is populated by writhing sex mannequins and a man with a shape for a face. It's your fault. Every horror you face is a manifestation of James's guilt because he killed his wife. Pyramid Head is there to punish you, so really, Pyramid Head is the righteous arm of justice and you are a bad guy who deserves to die. Or at least be scared witless by one of the most effective horror games ever made. Next up, we've got Gabriel Belmont from Castlevania Lords of Shadow, outwardly an honourable warrior voiced by Robert Carlyle, who's really very good at carving up mythical nasties with a chain whip in the shape of a holy cross. If anyone's going to turn out bad in this game, you'd put your money on Zobek, and ding ding ding, you'd be right. Listen to him waffle on and on before Satan himself has to come down and serve him his just desserts. You, as Belmont, then have to fight and kill Satan, which is like the ultimate stamp of goodiness. I mean, nothing you do is going to get you more brownie points than offing the devil. But wait, what's this? A post-credits ending sequence has us following Zobek into a dank old church where he's met by a very, very, very old and haggard looking Gabriel Belmont, who is now also Dracula. Yes, the big bad of the entire Castlevania series. Yep, you've been playing as pre-Dracula the entire time, and it gets worse in Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2, where near the start you're forced to feed on an innocent family to slake your thirst for blood. Who'd have thought a man who killed his wife would do such a thing? Oh yeah, he killed his wife too, didn't he? Next up, we've got a character from Hotline Miami 2, Wrong Number, and yes, you could justifiably say every character in Hotline Miami is a murdering scumbag anyway. But none are as bad as psycho cop Manny Pardo, who likes to wind down after a hard day's crime fighting by going on the odd killing spree or five. What's wrong with that, you might ask? Going out for a killing spree is the Hotline Miami equivalent of taking a cigarette break. What's the big deal? Well, you know that mad serial killer Pardo is after, the Miami Mutilator. Well, spoilers, Pardo is the Miami Mutilator. So it turns out that in Hotline Miami 2, you've been playing as a murderous psychopath all along. Who'd have thought? Our penultimate entry this week is from the Tekken series, and yes, I know that technically it's a beat-em-up and you can control anyone, but there is a sort of protagonist, at least from Tekken 3 onwards, and his name is Jin Kazama. Now, quick story recap for those of you who don't know Tekken. Jin is part of the Mishima clan, a family so screwed up they make Metal Gear Solid Snake Triplet seem positively harmonious. Hey, Hachi is Grandad Mishima, a greedy bloke with silly hair and big fists who doesn't like sharing anything, not even with his son Kazuya, who's Jin's dad. So Kazuya and Heihachi chuck each other down volcanoes for a couple of games in a competition to see who can be the most horrible person in the world, until Tekken 3 when Jin appears in a blaze of pure protagonist light. Jin's nice for a Mishima, he has friends, he goes to school, he hits people respectfully. He turns into a flying demon like his dad. Ah, oh, Jin, we had such hopes for you. Turns out by Tekken 6, you're even more evil than your dad and granddad. I never liked him anyway. Ever since my mate Darren spammed that twirly double level kick attack that he does. You know, the one that goes high, low, low, high. Oh, none of those wins count Darren. Doing Jin's high, low, low, high twirly kick attack is as bad as being Eddie.
He's the killer. You say that every time there's like a who done it no, or something I on bet the TV. He is. You can't just look at the first character that comes on and go. He's got a sly the... face. He's investigating the murder. Well, what better way to cover up your tracks? Oh, Mum, you are silly. There's no way Scott Shelby from Heavy Rain is the origami killer. He's too nice. He beats up bad people and cooks eggs. Would a murderer cook eggs? No. Yes. Our final entry, Scott Shelby, is to this day part of one of the biggest plot twists I can remember in a game. It's tragic and horrific all at once. Turns out the reason he likes kidnapping and then drowning young boys is because his brother drowned when they were younger and recreating the grisly scene obviously helps him deal with his grief, I don't know, anyway. The knowledge you've been aiding a serial killer all the way through Heavy Rain hits pretty hard. Not at least because it means my mother was right. I told you! Oh, well I done, well you. done. Mark it on your score. Oh, that's it. Then. Get all annoyed because I was one right. One out of 67. You were About wrong. One out of 67. Oh, you, you can't help yourself, can you? Got to have the last word. Do you remember when you had that theory the that time. Dumbledore was Voldemort in Harry Potter? I'm telling you, he would look the same if you shaved his hair and eyebrows. Anyway, there are seven times you were the bad guy all along. Let us know if you can think of any other examples like this video if you're feeling kind. Watch another one by clicking one of the links on screen and subscribe for more of them every Friday. Thanks for watching.